Welcome to Bioremediation and Dr. Mick. In this video, we need to explain what are the application of the phytoremediation. Also, we need to explain the microbial versus the plant-based bioremediation process. All of this will be explained after the break. Welcome back. Actually, we have two basic biological approach to treat the contaminants in place. So the traditional bioremediation system rely on the microbial metabolism and phytoremediation which rely on the vegetation or the plant. So these are the basic biological approach to treat the contamination in place. So what is the phytoremediation means? So the phytoremediation is the direct use of living green plants for in situ or removal or degradation or containment as well the contaminants in soil, even in uh, sludge or sediments, also surface water and groundwater as well. So you can use the plant in the bioremediation process. So phyto means plant. You can use the plant to degrade or biodegrade the pollutants or the contaminants in place. So phytoremediation is a low cost and also clean up technology. We can also mention this is green technology. And also phytoremediation most useful at sites with the uh, uh, shallow and also low levels of the contamination as well. Also, phytoremediation useful for the treatment of the wide variety of environmental contaminants. Also, effective ways or in some cases in place of the mechanical cleanup methods as well. So, if you look at this figure, you can find the contaminants in the soil can be utilized by the rhizosphere of the uh, roots area or root zone. So the root able to do the absorption of these contaminants and the plant able to uptake these pollutants or contaminants and go in the plant parts. So what are the phytoremediation applications? Actually, we have many applications of phytoremediations and can be classified based on the contaminant fate and also the mechanism. Contaminant fate as the degradation and also the extraction and the containment. And containment means you can keep the pollutants but under still under control. That means the contaminant cannot move from place to place maybe the contaminant not available or bioavailable for the microorganism in the soil for example and so on and also can be classified according to the phytoremediation mechanism or the mechanism of the plant how the plant able to degrade or biodegrade these pollutants according to different mechanisms which may be involved in the extraction of the contaminants from the soil or maybe groundwater, also concentration of the contaminants in the plant tissue, or maybe degradation of the contaminants by various biotic or abiotic processes, also using the volatilization or transpiration of volatile contaminants from plants to the air or our environment, also immobilization of contaminants as well in the root zone, also, one of the mechanisms is also the hydraulic control of the contaminated groundwater and the control of the runoff, the uh, uh, erosion, and also infiltration by the vegetative covers as well. So, these are in general the phytoremediation mechanisms. So, if you look at this figure, can summarize the, all the applications of the phytoremediation process. So you can find the pollutants in the soil and some of the mechanisms under the soil like the phytostabilization, phytostimulation and also rhizofiltration and other mechanisms inside the plant and above the soil 
as the phyto degradation, phyto volatilization, and also the phyto extraction as well. So one of these application or mechanisms is the phyto degradation. That means the plants able to enhance the degradation of the pollutants in the rhizosphere. And the rhizosphere is the root area of the plants. Also in this area, the microorganisms count in this rhizosphere in the soil can be greater than non-rhizosphere soil. This is maybe due to the microbial or fungal symbiosis with the plants. That means the plants and fungus able to live together. Also another possible mechanism for the contaminant degradation is the mechanism within the plants. Some plants may be able to take the toxic compounds and metabolizing the available nutrients, after that able to detoxify the contaminants, means remove the contaminants. Another mechanism or application called the phyto extraction or sometimes called the phyto mining. This is the process able to accumulate, so this is called extraction, so able to accumulate the contaminants inside the plants. So this accumulation may be within the plant in the shoots or maybe in the, the leaves of the plants. That after accumulation we can harvest the crop of the plants and removing the contaminant from the site. So once the plant is able to accumulate this contaminant, then we can harvest the plant and after that we can remove the contaminant as well. So this is the one of the mechanisms of phytoremediation called the phytoextraction or phytomining. Also we have rhizofiltration process. So in this process the plant roots can be used and absorb the contaminants. Then contaminant after absorption may be concentrated and also precipitate the toxic metals from contaminated groundwater. And rhizofiltration is different from the phyto extraction. So in that mechanism is root accumulation and harvest using the hydroponic or soilless growing techniques. So in phyto extraction there is no harvesting of the plant. Another mechanism we have called the volatilization or transpiration. So in this mechanism the plant able to volatile the contaminants to the atmosphere. So this is also one of the possible mechanisms for removing the contaminant from the soil or water of a site. Also another mechanism we have called the containment and the immobilization. As mentioned before, the containment means you can keep the pollutant but under control and the immobilization may be you can absorb the contaminant onto the soil particles. So a containment using the plant bending the contaminants to the soil also may be render them non-bioavailable or maybe immobilize them by removing the means of transport. So you can uh, keep the uh, pollutants still under control. This is called the containment and also the immobilization. We have different physical containment of the contaminants by plants can take the form of bending the contaminants within the humic molecules. And the humic molecules are the some organic substance. For example, maybe the carbohydrates. One of the example of the uh, humic molecules or humic substance. The last mechanism we have, this is called the evapotranspiration. Also one of the mechanisms of the phytoremediation process. So evapotranspiration, this is the term including two different terms, which include the transpiration and the evaporation together. So both of them combine together to producing evapotranspiration. So this mechanism evapotranspiration, utilizing the natural mechanisms of the plants to minimize the infiltrating water. So if you look at this figure, you can find the groundwater 
discharge and the evaporation occurs from the grass and trees then transpiration so evaporation from the 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 soil and also the uh, transpiration from the trees and grass can form the evapotranspiration so these are the different applications and the mechanisms of the phytoremediation and this is the end of this video today and don't forget to share like and subscribe and activate the bell to reach all of my new videos thank you good luck and bye bye